So it's an, and how long and why do we study and make research about the endocannabinoid system? Sure. Well, I'm a neurologist. Um, I've been in practice for some years when uh, it occurred to me that I was giving increasingly toxic drugs to my patients with less and less benefit. This led me back to uh, a love I had had earlier in my life of medicinal plants. And it led me to South America to study how indigenous people use medicinal plants. Uh, when I came back from the rainforest in 1996, I quickly became involved in the medical cannabis controversy. And I studied it and uh, discovered how complex the topic was, but also how fascinating that it was. Uh, and I learned about a thing called the endocannabinoid system. The endocannabinoid system is responsible for keeping balance. The technical term is homeostasis. So if there's too much activity in a system, it will bring it down to where it should be. If there's too little, it brings it up to where it should be. Well, it actually is the main regulator of how our bodies work, whether it be the nervous system, the gut, even bone formation. So it's something that intimately regulates uh, every aspect of our daily lives. The unfortunate thing is that uh, even today, it's not taught in medical schools for the most part. Um, and that's crazy because in our brain, there are more receptors for the endocannabinoid system than there are for all the neurotransmitters put together. The system was described in the early 1990s, but that's been enough time yes. that it should have been adopted better. I think it has a lot to do with an association with cannabis, uh, which isn't fair because this system is older uh, than the plant. Yeah, we have evidence that cannabis plant uh, have anti-inflammatory effects. Can you tell us about it? Sure. So uh, many diseases of age relate to inflammation, and this includes arthritis, but also some of the degenerative diseases of the right. brain, uh, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, things of this sort. Uh, many disease processes and infectious diseases are associated with inflammation. Um, so there are various approaches again to this, including diet, uh, but cannabis is filled with anti-inflammatory compounds, whether it be THC, cannabidiol, uh, and the terpenoids, many of them <clears throat> combat inflammation and, and help prevent these kind of progressive disorders. I used to, to say to my patients that um, doesn't exist a magical pill because you have to change the lifestyle to be able to also to control inflammation, but cannabis is a great tool uh, when everything is done together. Yes, true. So patients that are new to medical cannabis therapy sometimes, uh, they're worried about the side effects. Uh, cannabis you always know to have a very safe profile. But sometimes patients need high doses, and what are the most common side effects we can face when patients using high doses of cannabidiol? Sure. As you mentioned, at low and conventional doses, cannabidiol is extremely safe. Uh, safest drug I've probably ever used in my career. In certain situations, like Dravet syndrome and Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, very high doses of pure cannabidiol are used 20 milligrams per kilogram per day. Because these are often patients on many drugs, uh, additionally at the same time, um, there can be some drug-drug interactions. Uh, in particular, cannabidiol with a drug called clobazam can lead to the buildup of a breakdown product called N-desmethylclobazam, which is very sedating. Um, so this is the most prominent uh, problem, but it responds to lowering the dose of clobazam, not the cannabidiol. Yeah. Why the terpenes are important, and when you consider to use medical cannabis? Why the terpenes? Sure. So the terpenes or terpenoids are the aromatic compounds in, in cannabis. Uh, THC and CBD have no odor, in fact. So. 
the terpenoids uh, that are produced with the cannabinoids by the plant work together to make a more effective overall medicine uh, as opposed to THC alone, which is a very difficult medicine to tolerate, uh, has many side effects that can be counteracted when it's used in combination with cannabidiol or the turbinoids. And so why the entourage effect is so important when you consider in the, all mm -hmm. those things? Well, as I mentioned, THC alone is a very difficult drug to use. Um, we can think of it as a soloist in an orchestra. These other components are the accompaniment. Um, and, but because of the added or synergistic boosting benefits of these other components, uh, beautiful music can be made. Mm -hmm. Medically, that translates into a better medicine that has a greater effect and also fewer problems associated with its use. So with THC, the difference between the dose that might help reduce pain and that that produces side effects is very narrow or non-existent. It can be the same place. Mm -hmm. When we have cannabidiol and the terpenoids, it vastly expands how much THC can be tolerated without problems. Oh, okay, Makes it a more viable medicine when it is a whole cannabis extract. Perfect. Cannabidiol in animal testing will show uh, what's called a biphasic response. This means that at a very low dose, it does, it's not effective for pain. Then as you raise it, it reaches a point where it's effective for pain. But if the dose is too high, it falls off again. So this is strange. Most drugs go like this. Yeah. When cannabidiol is combined with the terpenoids in an extract, in other words, when the plant's components are all there, we don't lose the benefit on pain at the higher dose. Uh -huh. It continues to be effective for pain at whatever dose it's taken. So this is better. Uh, and it, it's a clear uh, reason that uh, whole plants are often better medicines than single components. Perfect. Are there are any messages you want to say to Brazil for the, the public is listening? Well, I hope that people will retain an open mind about cannabis. We've heard for decades about how dangerous or addictive it is, and quite honestly, this has all been exaggerated. It is absolutely the truth true to say that any drug will have side effects when it's overused. People should understand that there is a world of difference between people smoking cannabis all day for a recreational effect as compared to its use in a medical context, sure. where the idea is to use the smallest amount that will help reduce pain or other symptoms, and with the aim of avoiding side effects especially intoxication. Uh, but this is a very health-promoting drug, uh, and I hope that people will give it due consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigada.